Okay, so let's talk about Mad Men, episode three, season seven. Great, great episode. I loved it. And um, I remember last season, it was about the third episode where the season kind of got flowing. And this is a really, really good episode. So I'm hoping that this is going to keep the flow going of awesomeness in Mad Men. Just really, really love the show. We got Betty. We got the awesomeness that happened with Megan and Don. And we got the last scene, which I thought was awesome. Because, you know, I'm not a Don Draper fan. So I didn't write notes this time. So I'm just going off the top of my head and I'm going to try to remember everything that happened. At least in a narrative form so I could tell you each story and not miss any key points. So let's go. I'm just going to start out talking about Peggy because she had kind of like a small little bit. Basically the Clio nominations came out and those are the advertising awards. And she was just a little butt hurt because she didn't get nominated for the Rosemary's Baby thing from last season because she felt that was her best work and she deserved it and all this stuff. What's the little Jewish boy's name? I forget his name. But anyway, he was nominated for Playtex, which obviously we know I think was Peggy's first account. So, you know, just a little butt hurt there. So, yeah, I mean, she was a little bit mad at that and. So, you know, she's very unhappy now at the agency, um, not, you know, feeling fulfilled or whatever. So I sense that's going to be a big deal come the end of this season or the end of next season. Because it's like, what, season seven, part one, and then season seven, part two, however they're going to do it. So that's it. When the first scene with Betty on this episode, I was like, Betty! Because you guys know that I like me some Betty Draper. You know, just wanting to see her thrive after Don Draper and all the bullshit that she went through with him. However, we find Betty this season at this very sort of insecure, kind of bitchy, kind of unhappy mode. And, you know, on the season six finale recap that I did, I went on and on about how she and Henry are so happy and she's at a happy place and all that stuff. Obviously, it's not true. <laughs> so, like, she was talking to her friend from around the town who has become a travel agent. And, you know, I was just kind of bragging about, you know, I'm in the office three days a week and all this stuff. And you could tell that Betty was just a little bit upset because you know she's basically at home mom with the three kids so anyway she goes back home and she's like a total bitch to the maid and basically it's this thing about you know needing a chaperone to go to little bobby draper's little visit to a farm and she decides that she's gonna go with him so she goes with him she's kind of not cool, but then cool at certain points. I mean, she's throwing shade at people and being kind of mean to people, but then she's being cool when she drank the milk and Bobby was so happy that her his mom did it because, you know, she looks cool. She's a risk taker or whatever. And at some point, they have lunch and Bobby gives away her sandwich. She goes away. And I wonder where she went away to. I think she said she might have had to go to the bathroom or something. Anyway, she went away and then she came back and he ate, he gave her sandwich away or traded her sandwich with some girl that didn't have a sandwich. And anyway, she got all mad about that. And then they were, she went back home and then Henry Francis came back and he asked her, you know, what went wrong? And Bobby was pissed about it. He asked Bobby first and Bobby was like, oh, I wish it was yesterday. Or I wish it was tomorrow or something like that. And then he asked Sally, um, Sally, he asked Betty about it. And Betty says it was a perfectly fine evening and he ruined it. <sighs> By giving away her sandwich? And then <laughs> she said something about how the kids don't love her. Why don't the kids love her? And Henry's like, okay, you're tripping. And he kind of just walks off. So I don't like this area that they're taking Betty into. I mean, it seems like she's going to be depressed and bitchy again and 
we saw that before. You know, I need something new and interesting to happen with Betty. If they're going to show her at all. I honestly didn't think that they were going to have Betty in this season at all. I don't know why, but I just felt like because last season she ended it where she was, you know, so in love with her husband still and, you know, had a good family life and Sally was kind of um, taking to her a little bit more. I thought it was going to be like, this is how Betty's story ends for us. So I didn't expect her to be on, but they're going to have her on and be this depressed, mean biatch, then I'm not here for it. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. So let's get to my favorite, non-favorite person on TV, Don Draper. So it starts out really cool. Basically, he's calling Don. And, you know, Dawn is in Joan's position now, so she her workload is a lot more, so she can't just be at his beck and call anymore doing, you know, inside stuff for him. So he calls. He gets annoyed because she's busy, but she tells him that Alan Silver, who is Megan's manager out in L.A., has called. And he calls Alan Silver, and Alan Silver basically says that Megan did the audition for the show, and she got like really insecure and was begging to do it again, do the audition again. And that she met, she got the name of the director and hunted him down and cried in front of him to tell him how good she was for the part and everything. So basically she's like really, really desperate and insecure, losing her confidence. And Alan Silver is just like, come down here, you know, talk to her and maybe you could shake her out of it. So... Dawn comes, this is a surprise visit, and of course Megan's all excited, oh, surprise visit, thank you for coming, blah, 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 and they do the do, and that's when Don basically confesses that Alan Silver called, and I mean, rightfully so, Megan gets really mad, like, that's the only reason that you came out here, and why are you even acting like you care about me? Um, what if I get, what if I surprised you and visited you <laughs> out of the blue, you know, what would I find out? You know, that's a scary thought for you, right? And he's like, no, I'm, I've been doing good. There's no other girl. I haven't even been drinking that much. And she's like, well, why, you know, why are you never there when I call you? Why do you always have to call me back? And why is it always really quiet? That office is never, never quiet. So what's going on? So he finally admits that he was put on leave from the agency and that he's been on leave for a year. And she's just like, wow. So <laughs> you've been out of work for a year. I've been here alone for a year. You didn't tell me about it. You probably weren't going to tell me about it. So she kind of ends it. And I was like, yeah. I even tweeted that. I was like, yay, Megan! Because she was just kind of like, you know, I'm not going to walk out of my own house, so you need to go. And, you know, this is the end for us, basically. Uh, later on, he does call her and tries to apologize and, you know, tries to sweet talk. And basically he said, oh, I shouldn't give that away. Okay, okay, backtrack, backtrack. So he has a meeting with the same guy that he had the meeting with last week that I didn't really cover on the recap. They offer him a position, and he goes to Roger, who he hasn't talked to for a year, and he shows him the offer. And Roger says, you know, that's a good rate. It makes it seem like you're not getting demoted, like it's not a demotion. And he's like, so what do you think I should do? Um, there's still, like, a little bit of... I wouldn't say heat, but there's a little volatility between them. Anyway, Roger is just like, well, if you want to come back, come back. And he's like, oh, okay. So he calls Megan. He tells Megan that, oh, I fixed it. You know, I got the, I got my job back. And she's like, well, fixing it would have been you coming back out, you getting a job out here. And, you know, she's just not falling for the BS and he says, I love you. And she's just like, good night. So I think Megan is over it. And I'm so happy because after, I mean, he just treats her like crap. And I think she tried to be a different kind of woman 
for him to try to get him out of his ways and his power struggle with women and you know just the, he's never treated women really right <laughs> so yeah I think she's over it and I'm like yay but I would still like to see more Megan this season because Megan is actually one of my favorite characters like one of my top five favorite characters so hopefully that happens now Don goes back to work and he's very, um, I don't know, apprehensive. He feels nervous. He's he's walking slowly. He's not knowing what to say to people. Um, everybody sees him and is really, really surprised that he's there because basically Roger is the only person who knows that he got his job back. So, I mean, Joan sees him and Lou sees him. And, um, yeah, the partners have a meeting. Pe uh, Joan, Roger, um... <laughs> you know, the partners, Bert, and the guy, Jim, who is quickly becoming one of my favorite characters, by the way. Um, they all discuss bringing him back, and basically, I think Roger is just on, on a stance that he misses him, and, he, you know, it's a reminder of the old days for him, and... He's, you know, saying that he's a genius and that he's this, this creative thing that we're lacking right now and he needs to come back. Joan is not here for it. <laughs> She's like, I, I will admit that he's a genius, but, you know, he still kind of tarnished our names. And uh, other people agree that, you know, I hate what they're saying out there in the streets about our company because of what he did. And most of them want to get rid of him. But it was brought up that he's a partner and... If they got rid of him, they would have to buy out his partnership and that they really couldn't afford it at the time. So they call him into the meeting. They say, you know, you can have your job back, but it's with a few stipulations. So basically they have him on this real, real tight leash. Is that a good motion for a leash? I'm trying to do it like tight so that it's like the neck is right here. Anyway, um, <laughs> of the stipulations uh, that I remember, he has no one-on-one -on -one contact with any of the clients no drinking unless it's hospitality for a client he has to stick to a script when he's in meetings and the script has to be pre-approved and there was one other thing that was just kind of like ooh. <laughs> but basically yeah he can't do anything he's like locked in this prison and he took it i was really surprised that he took it so you know, maybe this is a humbling of Don Draper season. I don't know. I think all everything is caving in around him. You know, his marriage is going to shit. He doesn't have a job. Not no real prospects that he's interested in. And, you know, he was desperate. He had to take it. Humble himself. So I was really, really surprised at that. But I was really surprised that I was really happy at how they discuss that and I think that that meeting without Don was one of the better scenes of the season so far because I was really like ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, I think that's all that happened pretty much you know there was yeah I think that's all that happened I don't think that I missed much but um if I did leave it in the comments and all that stuff so did you guys enjoy this episode as much as I do? I think that this is going to be a really, really good season based on this episode because there's a lot of things that are just going to unveil. And, you know, I'm sure that Don is going to, like, reach a boiling point and just spaz out. You know, I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen, but there's a lot of good stuff, I think, to anticipate. So, yeah. Yeah. Like this video, comment, please share the video and subscribe to my channel. And, you know, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and my blog. And um, I will talk to you guys next week. All right. Peace.